Hey guys, what's up? It's uh, been a while since I made a video and I felt like making one. So in this game, um, I play against Tips and we get King of the Hill and we both go Tally, which, you know, it's a bit random. I don't think uh, that's it's that great of a sieve on that map, but this is what happens. So I'm just gonna show you guys my point of view from my stream a couple days ago. Um, I think the game itself isn't like overly exciting or something, but I do think there's a lot of things to learn from if you are looking uh, to improve. Um, because it's it's uh, yeah spoilers. Uh, I win this game and it's a rather sim simple game, but it's still a good one. So. Like it kind of shows you how to turn something small into a big advantage, in my opinion. So yeah, for the early game, um, there's already videos of the bolt and stuff. Like you can find it on my channel. Uh, so I'm not really gonna go over it too much. But I still do the same thing, or I just go eight on foot, one on wood, three on gold. So yeah, we see the, we see a scout in the north, which means uh, we can just go south. It's Delhi versus Delhi, so he's only gonna have one scout. Um, so yeah, you, you, you don't go chasing in that same area. You just go the other way, and then you get the free sheep over that side. And yeah, like as you can see, I'm not that fast of a player, and I don't think you have to spam. Your things all the time and i'm kind of just chatting to some people in chat i think um you know i think uh if you get comfortable with it ab4 is a pretty relaxing game you don't have to do that much so we're um we're finding more sheep and uh yeah not too much to comment here you can kind of see me just chilling as we're waiting for uh, the game to really start get uh, starting get starting to get going, sorry. So no real information gained yet. We kind of saw a couple of hills on gold. Um, yeah, when I when I lay back in my chair like that, I always have my feet blocking my view of my screen on seeing how many resources I have. So that's a bit of a downside of it. So I figured I'll just sit normally, <laughs> which is uh, what you saw happening there. Uh, so yeah, I, I usually just click the gold mine, and once it's on thirty nine hundred, you can drop off and then you can age. Nothing too complicated. All right, so we want to drop off the sheep and then get scouting info on what he's doing. So I shouldn't go north. Uh, yeah, okay, I don't. I saw that I was considering it, but like the, uh, the sheep are already gone from his scout, and even if there were still sheep, I much rather get scouting information than get the uh, extra sheep. So uh, yeah, always be sure around this time of the game to um, have your scout at, at their base. All right, so now we see something. We see Tower of Victory. So we have a different build. Um, and I'm just going to make a barracks because I want to get the walls up as soon as I can. I would do this regardless. I don't want him to make horsemen as well. 
So you kind of force him to go archers if you go barracks, which I like. So anyway, him going tower victory. Now, what does this mean? So tower victory, for those that don't know, it scales better because you get higher attack speed on your units, but it's slower um, because you need more vills on gold and stuff and you need a double musk, which also costs some resources to make. So that means that I have tempo advantage in H2, but I will lose an extended H2. So I need to play around these things. I need to use the information that I gathered that he's went tower victory. And now he's going to go archery range because he saw my barracks with his scout. So we don't make a blacksmith here, we make a stable um, because we want to make be sure to get our walls up. And we need, might need a horseman to do that to defend our pike. So it's important here that we go for the stable as soon as we can um, so that we guarantee getting these walls up. He won't have enough tempo with his build since he's gone tower victory to contest this, to contest these walls being made. Um, so yeah, as long as we have one horseman here, then the bikes will not be able to die. He sees the stable here, so he won't be able to send this archer forward. So I know I'm going to get these walls up. Um, which is good because that forces a reaction out of him. I like to get onto different food sources early instead of having a group of idle vills later on. I like to kind of spread out when you can. So he can't train horsemen, or well, I know I know that he's not because uh, you know I went pikes first, so I'm not gonna get raided. So I can just get on that onto that food source, which is nice. All right, so we're walling off the site, um, and in the meantime. He's most likely making archers and pikes. We didn't scout properly, but we saw the archery range. He's, we know that he saw us going stable, which means he's gonna add pikes. Um, so we can just blindly assume that he's on pike archer. But it's usually still good to scout anyway, but um, we're, we're transitioning all our vills here now. So this is an interesting thing. So I had like over 10 vills on witches now, but I'm changing them to food and gold. So why do I do this? So I know that in an extended H2, his landmark is going to be better. And archers are going to become more and more important if you have a really big archer ball. Uh, horsemen kind of don't do great against it. And I can deal with the pikes without archers. So I could go stay on woods, get my own archers, and I'll fight it out in the feudal, but probably end up losing because I'm fighting into his, into his strengths of his tower victory. And I want to fight into my own strengths, which is my tempo advantage. Um, and that means that I'm now getting onto gold because I want to go H3. Well, he, I'm forcing my opponent to commit to H2 because I'm forcing him to reply to this. Otherwise, he's just going to lose the sacred side timer. So he has to mess units here. Like he can't just chill and give me all the gold income and this win condition of the sacred side. Um, so what's interesting here that I'm basically not giving my opponent any choices and I know exactly what he has to do because all his decisions are forced. Um, so we're taking the side, we're gonna get that gold income. So because of our tempo advantage from a different landmark, different build order, we get gold income, we get tempo and he gets uh, better scalability. But this extra gold income from our tempo will uh, will help us. And now I, I made some pikes, I made some horsemen, and now I just stop production because I don't want to play H2. I want to be playing H3. Um, I'm going to send some units north. I think I train a scout for it, if I remember. Yeah, I train a scout to go north to be able to um, get more vision of the relics. And then we see this wall in the south, which is all fine for me. Like, you know, he's using time and resources on uh, on walls to protect himself, but I want him to be able to, you know, play defensive. I'm cool with that. Um, I'm just going to kind of siege the wall. I don't really care what my army does. I, um, I'm not going to take a fight anyway, but it might force a response out of him. So 
So yeah, this, this is something that I'm known for is that I don't always scout too well, but I know exactly what my opponent is doing any, anyway, because I'm forcing him to make certain decisions and there's just no way around it for him. Like he would never just randomly go H3 here because then he just dies. Uh, he's not going to be able to be on time. All right. So we see some more, we get some more scouting info on the north. So here we give him the tempo because we are giving him the chance to take the side back <coughs> because he had to make H2 units and we didn't commit to this. Which means that his mess is way bigger and we have to just play it passive for now while we're waiting on these three units. I get my textiles here. Just in case things get hairy, then, uh, you know, it's a free tag with that easy. I was hoping to re remake that wall, but it didn't succeed. Um, and I'm putting some scholars in place to pick up the relics as soon as I age. Look at our barracks is out because we want to make men at arms. And men at arms, they are really easily counted in H3, but not in H2. And there's no way in hell that he's anywhere close to aging with the mess that he made and the fact that he had no sacred site gold income. Um, so we got scholars into, into the barracks as well. Then we're going to be able to grab the relics as soon as my APM can handle it. I'm not the fastest player. And now we have to get all the tags, if I remember to do it. We're grabbing the relics. Uh, this basically puts us at an eco lead because um, our fail count will be equal. And we're also going to get the H3 eco upgrades that he can't get yet. So we have a small eco advantage. It's not nothing too insane, but having the relics in this matchup is pretty nice, I think. And I like to try and leave three scholars into the mosque to get my ranged armor and my um, herbal medicine sooner rather than later. And we're just spamming men at arms. And now we're going onto stone because we know we're going to take the tempo now. He has to fall back. He can't contest the men at arms. And um, that means that we'll get the side, we'll get to attack. And we might want to do some keep dropping. So getting on stone here is pretty good. And we didn't really interact yet. We didn't fight. We didn't do much. But the game is pretty much over, in my opinion. I think I've won here um, because I, <laughs> I forced him to make an H2 army. That isn't going to be useful for him anymore. The archers are going to be really bad against the men-at-arm mass. And um, yeah, I'm just in a mess advantage here. And I took the side the first time not to win the game with. But I faked wanting to win the game with. Like, I forced him to reply. Because otherwise I could have trained more units H2 to defend it. Um, but now, this time, I actually want to be able to hold it. So I'm, I'm retaking it now. And now this 10-minute timer, um, I don't want to lose it again. We're kind of just... You know, sending our units in, they can't really die against H2 units. Men at arms are too strong here. And now we're pulling our scholars to heal everything up. And he's in really big trouble. Um, yeah, we're going to keep keep drop the sacred site to basically guarantee him not being, uh, being able to retake it without making a big amount of siege. And there's no possibility for him to make siege right now. So because he has to invest into army to contest mine. Um, he's he's going to have to make like knights and ask, and uh, crossbows and stuff. So we're kind of just running, like rallying behind his army. I should send some men arms here and there to raid. Okay. As I say that I do it. So apparently past self was thinking that at the same time. Um, yeah, and he goes knights to counter my units. Which is, you know, it's a, it's a counter for sure with knights. I think I have big enough mess here that I should be able to win it. Um, and I get scholars into the mix now. But essentially, this game is just over. Like, he's just dead. 
Uh, and if he doesn't die, then he can't retake the Sega side ever. Like the timer is ticking in the meantime. His eco is bleeding, he lost some fills in the north. Um, we got four to one relics. And yeah, I really wanted to show the cakes this game just because it shows how quickly you can win a game without anything happening, just from using your opponent's weakness, um, which in this case was that you went Tower of Victory. And whatever, like my opinion of the Tower of Victory, like when, when I think, okay, I think this is probably, you know, too weak because of this, and in this case, because of it not having enough tempo, then I'm gonna abuse that. And um, I think a lot of people struggle to close out games, and my games are really common to be just, you know, under 20 minutes. And I think this is a good example. And I do believe that there's, there's a lot to learn from this game, despite uh, hardly anything has happened. And now with all the scholars there, it's going to be really hard for him to deal with this. And, you know, he's been bleeding resources. He hasn't had the relics and the sacred site, so he's not going to be able to make as many scholars that easily as I, I have. All right, so, yeah, we're kind of just, you know, trapping his base. We're going to keep drop here. Uh, the game is just so over for a while. Um, he should probably just resign, but it's, it's fine. I'm going to forward it a little bit. Yeah, this is where we have this fight. And um, I think I actually leave to go to the toilet because I then I don't have to wait in between games. And this is like a nice time to do it because it's over anyway. So, yeah, hopefully you guys you can learn something from this. And it's not just about Delhi. There, there are so many games where you can f just try to find your opponent's weakness. And, um, and hopefully, yeah, hopefully this will help. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And uh, I'll catch you guys later.